cruise news time. And well, we've got a couple that has missed their dream wedding because of a dirty cruise ship. And there are rumors out there swirling around that a popular cruise director was forced out, forced out over a joke. Cruise news and my views. Let's talk about it. Hey, 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 what's up, everybody? Welcome to La Lira Loca. I am your host, Tony, here with the latest cruise news and views for your face, for your face on Sunday, November the 26th, 2023. And well, we've got some interesting cruise news today. The first story, a troubling story. There are sources in the Caribbean reporting that on a cruise ship, a passenger has been found passed away. And that's really all it says. We don't know the cruise ship. We don't know the circumstances, but we do know that a passenger has been discovered. The medical team on board has pronounced them passed away. And this all occurred somewhere in the Bahamas near the island of Bimini. I'm sure we'll get more information as time goes on, but I'm not sure everybody understands the fact that when you get a few thousand people on a cruise ship, especially in the age demographic of cruisers. You know, average age of cruisers is 48. And of course it extends on up into people that are older that, uh, well, you know, people passing away is part of that cruise life. And so hopefully the story will end up being a story about someone passing from natural causes and nothing nefarious, but we will wait and see. Real quick, before we get into cruise news story number two, a lot of folks asked me in the comments yesterday what movie I was seeing with my kids. And when I say my kids, these are adult kids. So uh, two of my daughters, one of my sons, a couple significant others. We also had a cousin on board and they're all in their mid twenties into their thirties. We went and saw the new Hunger Games prequel movie. It's got some sort of tagline. I can't remember, but it, it's the Hunger Games prequel movie, and it was pretty good. I was excited. The elements that I liked in the original Hunger Games were there. You had a whole Hunger Games aspect to it, but it was one of those movies, like several other movies that I roll around in my mind sometimes, that really talk about the human condition, and I'm always fascinated by what things we think make us human. Like this movie, Ex Machina, fascinating movie about the development of artificial intelligence, about the development of a robot, and seemingly the thing that made the robot most human came at the end of the movie when she was able to deceive the people that created her. So that's an interesting thing to chew on is our ability to deceive what makes us human. If you think of everybody as animals, that kind of thing is our ability to deceive uh, a characteristic that is uh, human. Uh, so it's interesting stuff. And there were some elements of delving into some deep thought about characters in that Hunger Games movie yesterday. Um, yeah, that's, uh, that's where my head's spinning at. Cruise news story number two, a sad story about a couple who had planned to have a dream wedding in New Zealand. Janine Sheriff and Kyle Risk, big Lord of the Ring fans, had planned to tie the knot at Hobbit Town. Hobbit Town, a place where you can go and feel like a hobbit. They jumped on a cruise ship in Australia and they had their friends and family make arrangements to show up at Hobbit Town for the nuptials. And while well, everybody got there and they were sending the couple pictures of Hobbit Town, but unfortunately, the couple were unable to go to Hobbit Town because the cruise ship that they were on could not pass hull inspection to allow the cruise ship to cross over into New Zealand waters and dock in New Zealand. Real quick, Tony from the edit here, and two things. Uh, thing number one, when you don't script anything, when you're just off the top of your head, uh, sometimes you say words way too often. And so I've said Hobbit Town quite a lot. And then when it's frustrating is when you're in the edit and you realize you're saying the wrong word over and over. It's called Hobbiton. No W. Hobbiton. So uh, if you go back and watch the story again, when I say Hobbit Town, you say Hobbiton. So, uh, but yeah, I just wanted to recognize that. I, if you're looking for it on the internet, it's Hobbiton, not Hobbit Town. And uh, I'm, I'm done saying that, I think, maybe in this show, but back to the rest of the uh, story. This couple is just a couple cruisers on the current 13-day Kiwi Adventure cruise on the Pacific Adventure. We talked about it yesterday, how this cruise ship was unable to get its hull cleaned prior to entering into New Zealand. Pacific Adventure was turned away. They reconfigured their whole itinerary, dropping all of their New Zealand stops and picking up stops in Tasmania. And like I said the other day, there were some people that were none too happy, including this couple. The article that I'm reading here from The Pedestrian 
includes this line. It says, in the end, just three juvenile muscles and one single hydroid, commonly lace coral, needed to be removed from the hull. However, this was still enough to trigger New Zealand's biosecurity laws. And so if this is true, and I don't know where this comes from, are, are you telling me that they could not remove three juvenile muscles and some lace coral? I don't know how extensive the lace coral was, but that that doesn't seem like a lot. p has given compensation to people on this cruise, $300 onboard credit and 50% off a future cruise. But for this couple that's looking to get married, I don't think that's the consolation that they are looking for. But as the article says here, at least they have each other. I remember when we were cruising to New Zealand, ships had been canceled prior to us getting there. And I just kept saying over and over, please clean the ship so we can get into New Zealand. And we got into New Zealand and excitingly, like this couple, we had a journey to Hobbit Town on the books. And well, we, we got turned away by a cyclone. So we didn't get to go to Hobbit Town either, but we did get to see some filming locations for the Lord of the Rings, which was cool. And um, yeah, can certainly understand their disappointment and the disappointment of others on that cruise ship. I'm, just, I'm still just scratching my head if that was the extent of the biohazard. I'm, I don't understand why it couldn't have been taken care of and the cruise continue on to New Zealand, but hey, I'm not, I'm not in charge over there at p and Australia or in the New Zealand government. How about that? Now, I want to take a moment and talk about a rumor that's floating around the internet. But before I do that, let me quickly invite you to subscribe. If you'd like staying up to date with everything going on in cruising, cruising, please consider subscribing with the notification bell on. You'll stay up to date with the cruise news and all the happenings. Plus, it helps us out. Thank you in advance. It doesn't cost anything. I think sometimes people think there's a charge. Just hit the subscribe button. YouTube will send you a little pop-up when the new show is out. So we talked yesterday about the retirement of popular Carnival Cruise Line director, Jonathan Cookie Adams. He released a statement. He said he wasn't fired. He said that he chose to leave of his own desires and his desires were to uh, do something else with his life. The timing of his retirement, a little weird. It's mid-contract. Normally you don't see people jumping out in mid-contract. And of course the internet is ablaze with a rumor that says that maybe pressure had been put on Jonathan to leave based on a joke that had been attributed to him. Some had said that in an attempt to get people to come to a deck party, that there was a joke about if you don't come to the deck party, you should just jump overboard or something to that extent. It's an unsubstantiated rumor that's floating around the internet. So based on what Cookie has said in his statement, what Carnival has said about his departure, there's no validity to the rumor in their statements. And so the rumor just continues to be a rumor. And I'm not saying that we even need to evaluate the rumor, but what I wanted to extract from this idea was this conversation about whether or not an overboard joke should mean that you uh, get fired. The question is, uh, cruise ship comedian, cruise ship cruise director, cruise ship musician, do you think if they make some sort of off-the-cuff comment about people going overboard in a joking fashion, should the cruise line um, ask them to leave. And I'm not saying that's what happened in this case. I just want to lay that out there. Uh, I don't know what the uh, backstory to the rumor is, it, you know, anything like that. What say ye when it comes to an overboard joke? If you're in a position of power on a cruise ship, is that a bridge too far? Should you be asked to do something else? Leave a comment below. Thanks so much for checking out the show today. I hope you enjoyed it. You can show your support by hitting the like button. This is Tony for La Lido Look. Until the next time, we'll see you on the Lido. Bye. Cruise news, cruise news, cruise.